You know, this is a no huddle offense, but not a hurry up offense. And so he can take his time, make sure he goes up and down the line, communicating what they're doing. And again, this kid as a true freshman is way ahead of the game as a true freshman. He's a real student of the game. There's the play fake to Carthen. He goes right. Oh, my. Oh, that would have been six. Travis Daniels, number 29, had it in the midsection. See, Travis Daniels is a safety, but he's really a corner. I mean, he's playing safety because they need him to play that there, but he has cornerback skills, and he made a great break on that football. A little pressure from Eric Alexander also took a little steam out of that throw by Chris Leak. And again, another third down and nine situation. Oh, here comes an illegal. Uh, Alexander does manage to get off for LSU. Here comes the blitz from the corner. Daniels gets through. Leak avoids him, lobs it out. Caught by Carthen. And Carthen out of one tackle across midfield and has a first down. Yeah, let's check in once again with Tim Brando. Vern, I know you remember the old musical State Fair. Well, it's the State Fair game. Oklahoma off a pick by Chance Mock. Ronaldo works off the isolation, bounces in. Sooners up early in the Red River rivalry. All right, Tim. Yes, we both do coming from that part of the country. You ever had a corny dog? I have had one, but probably not, you know, just at the yeah. at the local carnival down the street. Well, I've been accused of doing that. <laughs> First down and ten. I know you like your hot dogs. Oh. You, know, you probably really like corny dogs. I am a connoisseur of hot dogs, that's true. Here's Carthen inside the 40 and down at the 39 yard line. You know, that third down and nine was such a huge conversion for Chris Leak in Florida. I mean, they need to have some good things happen to them early in this ball game. And to take a look at Carthen over 100 yards last week for the first time in his career. But they get the third down conversion. They get a good run on first down and they're in LSU territory right now and uh, moving the football. Double tight end set one running back. Here's the deep handoff. And this is Deshaun Wynn, who uh, was going to be close for the first down. This is Wynn, the redshirt freshman out of Cincinnati. He's a thick guy, too. I was down on the field before the game and looking at his legs. I mean, he's a big, thick running back. He has the ability to break tackle, but also to run away from people. No hmm. gain. Third and two. Uh, two things here. Yeah. Florida has not been that adept at converting third downs, and LSU is unbelievable at defending. Right side, good struggle by Deshaun Wynn. And it'll be close for the first and ten. Well, it's a pretty good decision by Ed Zonbrecker and Ron Zook to go with a quick snap. They ran their short yardage team onto the field and lined up and snapped the ball quickly before LSU was set and got the first down. So a nice, uh, nice choice of what to run on third and short that time. Now out of the spread on first and ten. Ed Zonbrecher, the offensive coordinator. See, Chris Leak is looking to the sideline for the audible. Zonbrecher's giving him the audible on the sideline once he sees the blitz. Now upstairs in the box, the coaches are telling him where the blitz is coming from. There's Leak, pressure. Got him. That could be, could be, that's it. It's no fumble. Looked like it might have been. Randall Gay, who missed the first four games of the season because of an injured hand, has rid himself of the cast and made a big play. See, one of the things that Chris Leak and any freshman quarterback has to learn is that sometimes the defense wins, and you can't make a play every time. Randall Gay is going to come unblocked. Chris Leak knew the blitz was coming. You can't hold the football that long, and he's very lucky that they didn't call that a fumble. Warning. The LSU coaches very upset because that was not called a fumble and they just got a sideline warning. But uh, Chris Leak again has to know sometimes you, you can't make a big play every time. Sometimes you got to throw it away. Sometimes you got to take the loss and live the play another day. And he'll learn that the more he plays. Mike DeGore, the uh, outstanding center. Makes the line calls, and now he's over the ball. Here's the snap. Here comes the blitz again. Safety blitz. Finds Kelvin Kite, number two. And Kite works inside the 30, down at the 29-yard line. Ed Zonbrecher came with Ron Zook to Florida. He was a, a one-time offensive coordinator here at LSU, 84 to 1990. 
was in the booth last year, said he's moved down to the sidelines just to make eye contact. Well, whichever quarterback they played this year was going to have no experience, whether it was Engel Martin or Chris Leak or Gavin Dickey, and he wanted to be on the field to be able to look those guys in the eyes when they came off the sideline. Third and one. Leak goes left, got a man open, O.J. Small, first down at the 19, at the 24. Now one thing that Florida is doing, and then they're doing it with some effectiveness right now, is they're keeping Chris Leak in the shotgun, and they're spreading the LSU defense out, and so Chris Leak is able to see where these pressures are coming from and get rid of the ball pretty quickly. They haven't thrown the ball down the field, but he's been able to get it out of his hands with the exception of that one play where the blitz got it. Five of eight. And three of three on third downs this drive. That's a little high, but Small goes up and gets it. And then O.J. Small tackled at the 22-yard line by Lionel Turner, number 58. 7-0, Nick Saban. In his fourth year at LSU, having served at Michigan State prior to that, has led LSU to three straight bowls. And the 2001 SEC Championship. This is the guy I think they need to get the ball to right there, too. Ben Troop. They got to get him involved in the game early. Blitz off the corner, threatened, and they're coming. No blitz pickup. Oh, boy. Oh, have they no reason to. How about that? That's why there was no blitz pickup. Rand from CJ, from Chris Lee. See, when you blitz, you expect backs to stay in and pick up the blitz. Ed Zondrecker anticipated blitz, and instead of having him block, they let him go right down the middle of the field, and nobody picked him up. See, when you blitz, somebody has to peel off for that back. They fooled him, and Chris Leak found him for the touchdown. That is the first touchdown allowed by LSU in the first half of any game this season. Mm -hmm. The only Little points they've given up have really been a field goal. Georgia here three weeks ago. It almost looked like David Green to Veron yeah. Haynes, didn't it? That was a nice drive. I mean, that, they converted a big third down to nine. They mixed him up. Matt Leach with the extra point. Most impressive for the Florida Gators. Chris Lee, Rand Carthen. We're tied at seven. And after the touchdown, Ron Zook talking with Chris Leak in the sidelines. Yeah. Well, I mentioned he was 0 for 6 with three interceptions in the fourth quarter last week at home against Ole Miss in a heartbreaking loss. An excellent start for him so far in this ballgame in the first quarter and a very impressive Florida scoring drive. For the game now, 7 of 10, 57 yards. And Petrovich will kick off yet again for Florida. Henderson and Skyler Green are the beat men, and again Petrovich drives it back four yards in. It'll come out to the point. I want to show you what happened on this touchdown. This was an all-out blitz by LSU. They're going to blitz right here, and Lionel Turner is expecting Rand Carthen to block. But when he released, Lionel Turner has to go with them, but he didn't do it. He anticipated that Carthen would block, so he went ahead and rushed the quarterback, too, and nobody picked up Rand Carthen. That's called zero coverage. That means there's no free safety in the middle. Everybody's responsible for a receiver that goes out. Nobody picked up Carthen. LSU has outscored its opponents now by 100 points in the first half. That the first touchdown this year. Play fake, Matt Mark goes deep. Michael Clayton has it at the 41. He was the trail man as they had Debry Henderson across the 50. Nice play. Well, Debry Henderson is the clear out guy. The play action holds the linebackers up. Debry Henderson runs the free safety off, and that opens up a big hole on the crossing route for Michael Clayton, who also, you know, is 6'4 to begin with, but also can jump a little bit and went up and got the football. He's a guy also they want to get involved early for LSU. He hasn't. Had as many uh, catches here the last couple weeks. And he has just passed 2,000 yards for his career. Got off to a torrid start. Big opener, Joseph Adai. What a stiff arm. My goodness. He pulled into a Heisman. 
The LSU coaches that Joe told us that Joseph Adai had his best week of practice this week, partly because he knew he was going to be the guy today. Shiron Carey out with a knee injury that he injured against Mississippi State, and here's that stiff arm on Gus Scott, who is a very good football player for Florida. Joseph Adai, and that's an excellent run. They kind of had, you know, they had really high hopes for him this year, and Shiron Carey has a little bit overshadowed him, but this is his opportunity to really make a statement today. Had a couple of fumble problems early. That's a 17-yard gain. Here's the option. And LeVon Landry did a good job of uh, getting in the way of that one. Let's go down to Jill Eric. Well, Vern, when you think of Death Valley, you think it should be dark, but not today. LSU asked their fans to all wear white. They sold these white T-shirts. They paid attention, and if you look at the stadium, it is a sea of white. They're looking to shock Florida. White out Florida, they're calling it. We'll see how it goes. All right, thank you, Jill. They did that six years ago here uh, in a game against Vandy. I only noticed one shirt hanging over Jill Dunn, though. Aren't there three of us on this broadcast team? Yeah, she's getting swag for herself. Yeah. yeah. Self swag. Yeah, self swag. Second <laughs> and 12. Here's Mark. Again, good protection. Intercepted. Picked off by Keywon Ratliff. He could go a long way. Here's Ratliff. Mark chases him down from behind. That Mark has thrown the ball well today to start, but that one was behind his receiver. The receiver was breaking out, and the old rule of thumb for a quarterback, you throw the outs out. You don't throw the outs inside. Watch Clayton break outside. The ball is back inside. Now, either that was a miscommunication or just a bad throw by Matt Mock. But Matt Mock did what a good quarterback should do. You throw an interception, don't pout. Go and don't let him score a touchdown. Did a heck of a job to hold that return to 44 yards for Kewan Rentler. That's only the fourth interception thrown by Matt Mock this season. First down at the 30. Here's Parkin gets the handoff, and he's got some room for the 24-yard line. Let's go back once again and check in with Tim Brandon. Vern, Oklahoma had not fumbled all year, but they fumbled on a punt return, which sets up Cedric Benson's two-yard plunge. By the way, Vincent Young has come into the game, and it's made a difference. We're tied at seven in Dallas. A lot of pressure on uh, Mac Brown and the Texas Longhorns. They've not done well against Oklahoma in recent years. Bob Stoops. Here's the handoff right side. Carthen, and he is uh, inside the 10-yard line. 13-yard game. See, what Florida does is they either get in the shotgun and spread you out or they get in two tight ends and balance out that LSU defense. Whenever you get in two tight ends and one back, what that does is it forces the defense to be a little bit more vanilla. They can't be as exotic. They can't blitz as much. And you can run the football. First and goal. Leak under center. And Carthen is hit from behind by Chad Lavallee, who has had an outstanding year in the defensive line for LSU. Second and goal. This is the previous play, the good run by Rand Carthon, and they go two tight ends. And so what that does is it just kind of balances out the defense. You have seven blockers along the front line, and then you get one broken tackle, and it turns into a good run. Leak under center again, and the audible. He looks back at the sideline at Zonbrecher. Rand Carthon comes up, and there's a whisper going on. Good blocking by the offensive line. My goodness, double coverage. And there are feet tangled up in the end zone as Jamal Cornelius was the intended receiver. And LSU had that big, big win here against Georgia. Thrilling game. Then went on the road and soundly defeated Mississippi State. But they had a week off. Sometimes good, sometimes bad. Third and goal. That actually brings four. Troops open. Hey, missed him. Here's Lee. Has to throw it away. Yeah, good decision. He had been true, and he missed him. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Watch Ben Troop. He's going to run a post route, and he's open because LaRon Landry, number 30, is watching the eyes of Chris Leak. And right there he has the tight end, but he just didn't let go of the football, and then he made a good decision to not force it and try to get three points on the board. That will bring on Matt Leach, 8 of 11 for the season. The holder is Sean Morton, and the center, Casey Griffith. To break the tie, it's up, and it's good. 30-yard field goal set up by the 44-yard interception return of Kiwan Rattler. Not much going thus far for Matt Mock in the LSU offense. Their touchdown came on an 80-yard punt return. Matt Petrovich, high school linebacker, feisty kicker. And straight on kicker. I mean, how many, I mean, how many guys you see wearing the square toe anymore? Just, you don't see it. Not many. Yeah. Kicks it far and then runs down and makes the tackle. Name two. And he booms it again. Deborah Henderson will uh, Drop to a knee and come out to the 20 yard line. Sunday on CBS, Catherine Morris stars in TV's most watched new drama. Don't miss Cold Case Sunday after 60 minutes on CBS. One of the best straight on kickers, one of the last ones, may have been the last one, is a neighbor of mine, Don Cockrock. Oh, I guess. Cleveland Brown. Yes, he is. Lives down the street from me. Ray Worship. Mike Clark to the Cowboys. That's right, where's he? Where's he? Where's he? Then he goes. Similarity is not an easy thing. Oh, boy, what a pop in the, in the uh, line of scrimmage. Joseph Adai. Met by Channing Crowder. He's the young man who missed the last two. You like him a lot. I do. I mean, on film, he jumps out at you. Number 55. They didn't think he was going to be able to play until next week, but he's ahead of schedule, obviously, on a knee injury. He had scope surgery on his knee October 1st, and they didn't think that he would be back until next week. But when you watch him on film, he's clearly the best linebacker on this football team. I mean, he's explosive, and you can see he loves to hit on that play. Second down and nine. Here's Mark across the middle. Caught by his tight end, Eric Edwards, but he bobbled it and cost him an extra couple of yards. Ten seven, two twenty to go in the first quarter. This is a Florida team that has won 13 of the last 15. They came in here two years ago.